Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm Hillary Hedges Rayport, Chair of the Nantucket Historical Commission. Um, welcome to our monthly meeting. Um, the meeting is being recorded on Zoom. Um, and uh, just please be aware that anything that you show could be visible. Um, so be careful about sharing your screen. And um, we do have some uh, members of the public um, Please, uh, just so that everybody can be heard, uh, please direct your comments through the chair. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and call a roll call, make sure everybody can hear me and that everybody's present. So we'll start with the commissioners. We have Tom Montgomery. Present. Um, Clement Durkies. Here, present. Uh, Angus McLeod. Here. Nikki Rowland. Here. Uh, David Silver. Here. Uh, we have an, our alternate commissioner, Barbara White. Here. Um, we have our staff liaison preservation planner, Holly Bacchus. Present. And we have some, uh, we have a guest, Erin Doherty of Epsilon. Hi, everyone. Hi, Erin. Thanks for joining us. Um, and it looks like we have some members of the public. Um, Ken Bogrand. Present. And Mary Bergman. Hi, Mary, you're on mute, but I see you here. Um, and we also have uh, Polly Waldorf. Polly, do you wanna introduce yourself? Uh, yes, hi, I represent the owners of Three Beaver Street. So I'm here Thanks. to present for that one. Thank Great, you. thank you for being here. Um, okay, so uh, we're gonna get started. Is there any public comment for people who wanted to make a comment not on the agenda? Um, I actually have a public comment related to something not on the agenda. Um, so as a member of, a, of the public, I'm just going to let everybody know that I filed a citizen's warrant article. Um, whose, the purpose of the warrant article is to increase accountability and transparency in the planning commission on Nantucket called the Nantucket Planning Economic Development Commission. Um, the warrant is available as part of the citizens packet um, it's uh, a personal um, interest that I have, and I hope you'll all read it and we'll have more opportunity um, in other forums to discuss it. So that's my public comment. Um, and there aren't any other public comments, so we'll move on to approval of the minutes. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes of our last meeting? Did I leave tea over here? I'm sorry? Um, oh, I think that's Barbara. Okay, so is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you, Tom. Second. Thank you, Clement. Um, all in favor, uh, Mickey? Aye. David? Aye. Um, uh, Georgia Raisman has joined us. Georgia, are you in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Angus? Aye. Um, and Clement and Tom, are you in favor of your motion? Yes. Aye. And I am also in favor of approving the minutes, so they are approved. Okay, um, administrative. I'm going to share my uh, screen and just show our packet. Um, um, I just want to brief you all about um the follow-up from our last meeting so first i did include i i take notes on you know kind of a to-do list after our last meeting so i included that in the packet in addition to the minutes the things with a strike through or things that we decided should be done that actually got completed and the other items um did not yet get completed um so that's just interesting to know. Um, one of the items that did get completed was a request of um, the select board to add to the warrant um, an amendment of the 2005 um, town meeting action, uh, which created the historical commission because we are seven members, but our action to create our commission only had five and we were amended 
to be seven by the select board. This is something I didn't know. I don't think anybody really remembered it. Um, but when I started inquiring, I found out about it. Um, and under the law, we're allowed to have up to seven members, which is why the select board was able to um, increase the membership. But we'd actually like our motion uh, at the town meeting um, to be amended to make us seven and no alternates. So that's been added. Um, it was discussed last Wednesday, as you can see, Libby said, I will add this. So I expect that um, that will be on the warrant, but we'll see. Um, so that's follow up for our last meeting. Um, another item from our last meeting was um, budget. So Holly, I'm gonna need your help here, but um, this is the money that we need to complete our surveys and it's a match for the grant. So you can see I've included in the packet, this is from the current fiscal year. So we're now in fiscal year 2022, which ends in June next year. Mm -hmm. And you can see um, this line here, historic architectural surveys update from HDC for plus for $50,000. And we had, um, so we're, we're, we're conducting our grant and we're getting half, about a little less than half of this money <clears throat> back from the MHC once we complete that work. Um, but then we're going to be continuing to do our surveys. So um, I see that uh, Leslie made this request. And I just wondered, Holly, I just wanna make sure that we have enough money to do the work that we wanna do. Um, you know, nobody, we didn't, we weren't consulted about this, um, but presumably Holly, you consulted with the department. So could you just tell us a little bit about the budget and see if we need to make any additional requests or if we're okay? Well, first of all, I requested money, but I'm not the one to um, ask the amount if that's where your question is. Um, I think, you know, we know where we stand as far as this particular grant that we've received how much we put in the budget, we're going to, like you mentioned, it's a 50 per, uh, re reimbursable. So we'll be receiving, um, it was a 22.5, the project is 45, we've budgeted 50. So we'll have our, a little bit remainder um, for about a 30. Again, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't, uh, I don't have to be consulted as far as this request. Um, I'm just glad to see some money in there. Um, I don't know what else I could say on it. Um, okay. Sorry, I have somebody writing to me saying that they wanna get into the meeting and they don't know how. So just, I'm gonna just stop sharing my screen for a minute so I can do that. But please commissioners, if you have comments or questions about the budget, please let me know. Um, so to continue with the survey work that we're doing, uh, we're looking at approximately 50,000 50, a year, half of which is, um, is um, supplemented. Um, and so the 25 is, is approximately half of the, the matching fund. So does, does that add up for our, our next allotment? It sounds like it does. Yeah, I... Um... Oh, sorry, Holly, did you want to answer that? Just doing some quick math. It looks like we'll have approximately $48,000 for budget. So again, if we're going to be asking for another 20 through the grant, if again, if we're asked to um, submit application again, which hopefully we will be to continue this effort, uh, that should be enough, I would think. Yeah, I guess my question is, so the current project is like a $44,000 project approximately, right? 45. 45. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, what, so we have to pay a hundred percent of the 45 and then we're going to get um, 22 five back from the MHC. And when that comes back, it stays with our initiative, correct? Or no? My understanding it would stay. Yeah. Yes. So by asking for 25, I mean, I was a little confused because this, the way the language works, it's an expense increase request, 
which is made. So I didn't know if that meant that we requested 50 last year that stays in the budget. And this is an increase request of an additional 25, meaning that we have 75,000 in the budget for surveys, or if it just means that what is being requested in the budget for the fiscal year ending in 23 is going to be 25,000, then we will have the additional 22,5 that will come back. Um, and that will serve to match the grant that we request Plus, like we have a, a priority that we designated of um, surveying town owned structures. Um, and we also have our additional work um, planning for preservation around pavement in some areas. So could that money be spent on those other initiatives? If you see in that budget item, it's specifically for the, what they're calling HDC surveys. So I, I don't think so. I think it has to go to that particular initiative. Right. So I guess that's another question. I don't know why they call them HTC surveys. I mean, they're architectural surveys in general for general use. Or I guess I just want to understand exactly. I think there should be communication about exactly what the budget request is. With all due respect, the HTC has been obviously inactive since 1955. These HTC, these have been called HDC surveys. Now we all know that there are form Bs with Massachusetts Historical Commission. Um, you know, again, I think that also goes back down to what they were created, when they were created. Um, and HDC is kind of like the catch-all for the historic district. If, you know, I mean, they're the same thing. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to hang up on that verbiage. I don't think the commission should as well. It, it, it's the same, one in the same uh, effort. I agree. And I don't think we should get hung up on it. But I think that doing surveys of the town-owned assets would fall into this initiative because those are structures that are within our district. And those buildings would need to be I mean, we need surveys of those buildings, so. Well, I'm, I'm just suggesting that since we have initiatives that need to be funded and we have funding that we should connect the dots about, you know, how to deploy this funding if the town awards it in productive ways. Hillary, is, your, is your concern that we don't, there isn't enough money budgeted for the, the projects uh, that, that we hope to uh, accomplish or uh, the money that comes back added onto the 25? It sounds like it's going to be the, the amount of money that we need to for the, the matching funds. It's, I, no, I, I got the concern. No, I, um, I think that a lot of towns don't fund surveys at all. So I think our town is being generous and conscientious and I'm really pleased that it's in the budget at all. I just wanna understand exactly what is in the budget so that we can program it. Because what happens a lot is, um, you know, money gets put in the budget and it just never gets spent. And the, and the reason why we have the money is for our mission. So we can't program our mission if we don't, aren't clear about the funds that are available and I don't see how funds can be allocated if you know a, a clear need and use isn't expressed um, you know by the people who are actually deploying it that's that's all I'm talking about I mean it's I just think it's um, I guess I think there needs to be a little more clarity about how budgeting happens and and the important thing is the work product and the work product isn't going to get produced if there isn't clarity about you know what's needed and the scope and all of that. That's really all, all I'm raising because it's budgeting time. So that's why I'm raising it. Holly, is this something we could follow up with you about? I mean, I, I'm really just wanting to make sure that we're meeting the expectations of the town and that we understand the resources so that we can match our work plan to the resources. I'll follow up with the planning directors and town admin. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Um, 
Okay, staff and board chair update. Um, so I did include in the packet um, that we, you know, our, our uh, pal is, is at work. So Holly, do you wanna update everybody about what's happening? Yes, so I think I mentioned this at our CLG meeting, um, but the um, our consultant's pal will be on island next month December 14th, 15th, and 16th. Um, I was under the impression that maybe they wanted to meet with a commission, but it, it, from um, further emails with Ginny, um, Ginny uh, Virginia Adams, who's the, the head of this initiative from PAL, um, and I haven't seen him in many years, <laughs> um, but she and her uh, colleague, Melissa, will be on island those three days. Um, but it sounds like she would like to meet with myself and Hillary. And if, if Hillary, you're not on island, um, then another commissioner could obviously um, fill in that place. But it sounds like it's going to be a quick, as soon as they get on island, they want to meet, greet, and then get to work. So it's not going to be a, a sit down formal you know, thing. Um, but yes, very, very excited that they're going to be here next month. Um, you um, just for benefit of the commission, and I believe Hillary put this in the packet. Um, now that they are on board, we finalized everything. They had asked contacts, um, obviously for the uh, Nantucket Preservation Trust, uh, the Athenaeum, the NHA Library, and other uh, folks. So um, if you're on that list, um, please thank you, first of all, um, as an expert. Um, and uh, please, you know, we, we look forward to having your involvement with this um, project, with your expertise. I have provided um, those contacts and I will be providing additional information actually this afternoon to them that they have that before the Thanksgiving holiday. So we're very, very excited that this is going. So one of the things I thought we might do, so they're right now they're for the survey plan, they're trying to get the neighborhoods um, sorted out and labeled. And then they want to know our idea and Holly's idea of priorities of work. So I was thinking that we might kind of have a pre-meeting, which Holly, I know you're really meeting out. So please join us if you can, but if not, we could at least organize our views that we could submit to you, Holly, for your consideration and we can pass on to the consultants um, just to make them more efficient and um, we have a subcommittee, um, Barbara and Tom and me, but we might just call a meeting and look, it will be fun. We can look at the maps and think about priorities and kind of get our thoughts together so that we can have input. Does anybody want to tell me if they think that's a good idea or not? Clement? Hillary, yeah, I think it's a great idea and I am here. So I would love to help you any way I can. Oh, great. On um, that I, note, Hillary, oh, yeah. sorry, I just wanted yeah. to mention the email that we received yesterday afternoon um, about specific properties for the fish lots. So um, as you all recall, our HDC surveys, for lack of a better term, um, are, are not on MACRIS. They're here in the office, and that's going to be one of my in-kind services and scanning all that information and uploading that to PAL. Um, with the RFP, we did ask for um, approximately 100 properties to be um, included within this pilot survey. Um, in the RFP, I believe I, we included a list of 126. So uh, PAL is actually asking um, whether or not the commission has any specific properties that are of less priority and could be candidates for elimination out of the 20, uh, 100. Um, so 126 are listed in the RFP. Um, I think we had discussed kind of having more and the merrier that they could pick, but it sounds like they're wanting us to pick. So um, I do have the um, Excel spreadsheet um, available. If you wanted to view it, I can email it to the commission, but I think, um, you know, having, having it narrowed down to the hundred would be good. I think there's some in here that as you can see, actually have a little bit more information than others. Maybe we focus on the ones that don't have um, those that information. Um, as you can see, if you remember, I indicated whether or not MPT had a marker history on it, whether it was documented by HABs or PIN. Um, so I think that is a very, very beneficial, um, but I would like to 
you know, obviously no direction from the commission on this. So just to make sure we understand the, your question, um, our, um, our, our objective is to have PAL survey complete form Bs for 100 properties in this area. And the 100 will be chosen from that Excel spreadsheet, which you have. And somebody needs to pick the 100. Um, and Holly, I would think that you should pick the 100 um, <laughs> unless somebody else has an opinion about that. Or um, if you want our help, we can also take a first crack at it. So any comments on that? Tom? Oh, you're muted. All right. I'm wondering if uh, Barbara and, and you and myself, um, maybe we ought to walk the fish lots like we did the force main three thing. Uh, and, you know, then, we're, then we've got three people that are right up to speed on it to maybe help Holly with that. That's all. I mean, if she wants it. Just that would be great. I mean, we had a really effective uh, group of people, which included commissioners, but then also people from the community working on this grant. So, um, you know, maybe we could loop in like Mary and Betsy Tyler um, and Holly together and, um, you know, it's a hundred structures, but they're all really close together. <laughs> so, um, so why don't we get, why don't I loop back um, and we can get a date for that and see if Betsy will help. Holly, do you like that idea? Um, yes, I mean, you know, it would be nice for everybody to, who wants to um, provide that input, which I obviously encourage that. Um, to take a look at the list and then maybe you go on your own to take a look. I just think obviously the, the more the merrier, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to have time to actually meet up with everybody. So if you right. guys wanna do it, great, that's fine. Um, do notate that they're wanting to kind of have a lot of this geared before Thanksgiving so they can plan accordingly when they're here um, in the middle of, of December. So obviously the sooner we can give them that list, the better, that's all. So I don't know if before Thanksgiving is going to be possible, but Holly, can you email the Excel spreadsheet to everybody? And then, um, you know, we can email around to coordinate. That doesn't count as deliberation. So we'll just coordinate um, what we want to do and then we'll figure out how to do it. And if we have a quorum, we'll post a meeting. Okay, thanks. I see you clapping and having a thumbs up. So great. Um, do you want to give us a quick update on the, w, the other things on the um, agenda, Holly? Yes, so as you all are aware, WPI students have been here working really hard. Um, myself and Graham uh, meet with them uh, every week and go over what they're gonna be doing for the week, and which is great. So I've been really involved with them. Um, they're here on, their particular project is titled Salvaging the Historic Nature of Nantucket, Reducing the Construction and Demolition Waste of a Small Island. So really, it is a DPW initiative, but Historical Commission and the Historic District, if you will, is playing a key role. Um, and I have, you've seen my emails, um, asked for any commissioner from both the HDC and the Historical Commission to please provide your input to them. They have some questions for you all. Um, and uh, I know that they've, that's been ongoing. So thank you for those who have been able to do that so far. I think there, if you're not familiar with um, past WPI projects, those students have really provided a lot of input to the town of Nantucket in general, um, whether it's been from uh, working on a gap analysis for the hazard mitigation plan, as y'all know, I'm, I'm the coordinator, for, local coordinator for that to um, this initiative. And there's probably about four or five uh, uh, groups. So they're here working diligently, wanting to um, provide um, obviously some recommendations at, at the end of this um, semester uh, to Nantucket on this particular project. So please, if you're interested um, and don't know how to get in touch with them, let me know. And thank you. Yeah, hi, Holly. I'm one of them, as you know, I, I've been away uh, for the last week and uh, if you could provide me, you know, the wherewithal to get a hold of them, I, I definitely want to talk to them. 
Yes, I have taken your, your e actually, I sent them an email and said, hey, please reach out to Tom. So okay, um, do notate to anybody who's interested, um, they're, they're very flexible. So they'd route, they could do it in person or they could do it via Zoom, however you would want to. I can do it any way that. they want. Awesome. And they're also here in the um, plus office on Monday mornings every week, so. Okay. Great. Um, I'm so pleased this project is moving forward, Holly, and thank you for all you and Graham are doing on that. Um, okay, um, other items on the update. Uh, at our last meeting, we decided to send a letter to the planning board supporting the citizens warrant uh, limiting pools and spas, mini pools, spas in the historic district. And we did send that and it's in the packet for your review. Um, the uh, update to the select board was delivered. It's um, on the select board YouTube um, and the, you know, the materials are in their packet. Um, there has been a Mayflower Wind public information session. I wasn't able to listen to it. I don't know if anybody else did. I did not. Yeah. Um, Holly, do you have any comment for us about Mayflower Wind? Um, I do notate that they had their public info sessions on November 10th, 15th, and 18th. I wasn't able to attend either. I will note that our um, special counsel that the town has hired that helped us with the first consultation process, who's, in my opinion, the best of the best in the country um, in this expert knowledge, um, were involved with that, with obviously a list of questions. Um, again, Section 110F of the National Historic Preservation Act is undue harm on the NHL. And we are the largest contiguous National Historic Landmark. So it's important. Okay. All right. Thank you, Holly. Um, I am also realizing that I wanted to take a vote on the request um, for the select board to amend our um, motion of the 2005 town meeting. So I do want to do that because I want it to be clear that we do want to go ahead and have a full clear support. Is there any further discussion about this request to the select board for town meeting? And if not, could I have a motion? Um, so moved. So moved. Okay, that's by Angus and seconded by Tom. And I'm going to take a roll call vote. Mickey? Aye. Georgia? Aye. David? Aye. Uh, Clement? Aye. And I'm also an aye. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so now we'll move on. Um, we've uh, been asked for a letter of support for the um, uh, uh, historic rehabilitation of 3 Beaver Street. We have Aaron Doherty from Epsilon here and I'm seeing Ken has his hand up. I'm also just gonna mention that we have Polly Waldorf um, representing the applicant and they would like to make a presentation and we'd like to listen. And Ken, you have something you wanna say. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna participate in this because this is your technical stuff. I would just ask that with respect to the last item on your agenda with, with respect to the uh, joint meetings with the, uh, the uh, CLC uh, that uh, I be sent a formal invitation to those uh, because the fact that uh, I, I participated in the first session, and I think it was really important for town administration to be uh, uh, a part of that, because I think uh, the clearer definition of, of A, the roles that are clearly defined, but B, more importantly, the roles are not more clearly defined, and an agreement with respect to where the primary responsibility is will be one of the most significant things that the CLG can accomplish. So. Uh, um, so if uh, I, I apologize uh, for inter interjecting into your schedule, but just ask that I be involved in that and, uh, and thank you uh, if, if that's possible. Uh, so I will then leave the meeting with the rest of it to you. Okay, thank you, Ken. You were very helpful in our meeting and I was really glad you could be with us for the whole two and a half hours <laughs> and we'll try to be more efficient in the future and certainly keep you included on the notice when we set those meetings. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, um, Aaron, do you wanna present the request? Yes, uh, good morning, commissioners. Aaron Doherty with Epsilon, and I'm joined 
by Polly Waldorf, the project architect, who's also the owner's representative today. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us this morning. As uh, the chair mentioned, we're here today to request a letter of support for the rehabilitation of 3 Beaver Street, uh, which will be included in the project's state historic tax credit application, which we will be filing with the Massachusetts Historical Commission in the upcoming January 15th application cycle. The project will be seeking both state and federal historic tax credits to assist in the financing of the project, which will rehabilitate the two buildings at 3 Beaver Street for residential uh, rental uses. As you may already be aware, state and federal historic tax credits are available for the rehabilitations of income producing properties, which are listed on or eligible for listing in the National Register. A letter of support from the local historical commission is a required component of the state tax credit application as a demonstration of the public support for the project. The state historic tax program um, is a competitive uh, program in Massachusetts with a cap of $55 million in tax credits available each year. Uh, this project is also subject to a forthcoming local historic district commission review. Um, and in terms of process, if there are any changes to the scope of the project as a result of that local review, the tax credit applications would be amended to reflect those changes in that input from the local level. And that's not unusual for projects like this. So we have provided you with copies of the project's plans, which Polly will present in a moment, but to give you a high level view, the project involves the rehabilitation of the main house and cottage at 3 Beaver Street. The main house was constructed around 1750 and is a well-preserved example of the lean-to house form on the island. The cottage, which sits to the rear of the, at the rear of the parcel, was constructed in the mid 20th century within the period of significance for the Nantucket district. And it was built by the longtime uh, 20th century owners of the main house, uh, the Beamish family. That was originally constructed as a garage, but very early in its history was converted for residential use as well. The project will address some significant structural issues at the building, long-term deferred maintenance to the interior and exterior fabric, updates to building systems, window and roofing repairs, um, and other details which, which Polly will present. The project as a whole will retain and preserve significant interior and exterior historic features uh, as is required by the tax credit programs. For this project, the historic tax credits serve as an important funding source and the funds that are derived from the credits will ensure that the design and scope of work will be carried out at a very high standard, which will maintain the historic integrity of the buildings and preserve them for the future. So with that introduction, I will pass it over to Polly to run through more of the proposed scope of work. And then we are of course, happy to take your questions on the project. Thank you, Erin. Good morning, commissioners. I am Polly Waldorf, the um, architectural designer and owner representative for this project. Um, just so you know, like we said, we have not gone through HDC yet. We have that before them to be presented soon. And I know we already heard um, some comments from Holly that we will certainly be addressing. Um, thank you. And, um, you know, again, those will then, you know, be presented, I guess, as an amendment with the HTC once we do that. Um, once, you know, once we've addressed all of those concerns. Um, like Aaron said, we've got a lot of structural issues here that we need to address. Um, some of the main beams, we need attention and shoring throughout the property. Most are just supported with some temporary post and blocks. Um, corner posts are showing signs of rot and um, deterioration and the beams are sagging throughout. So there's gonna be you know, a lot of work. Um, there to really get this house shored back up. The front sill has rotted and collapsed is another um, big issue there. So, um, and then also since we're so close to a flood zone, we wanted to raise the property up, um, put a foundation underneath it, which will, you know, be addressed with, um, let me see, I think we'll be, yeah, put brick, um, a foundation in there so it you know obviously works in the historic fabric 
of the area, but it will also kind of preserve it for um, generations to come because we'll get it out of the flood zone and we'll also waterproof um, around it and everything else so that this, this house will be able to stand um, for a while. And we will maintain and repair the windows at the property, um, only adding what we need and making sure that those, you know, like Holly pointed out, are true divided light windows. Um, and let me see what else. We're going to also, one interesting, there was a historic front door on Three Beaver Street that was taken out at some point. And we do want to um, put that back in the same spot where it was and um, make sure that that also fits into the design-wise, the um, historic fabric of the neighborhood. And I guess we also wanted to add a shed dormer on the back. We will make that minimally visible from the street and the sides. Um, and again, work with Holly and HDC to make sure that, that meets approval for the uh, historic commission. So that is my presentation. Any questions? Thank you, Polly. Um, so I thought for the benefit of the commissioners and the public, it would be helpful to look to just refresh everyone's memory about the standard for rehabilitation, which is what we're what's being asked to be met here. Um, and then also just quickly acquaint everyone with the criteria that the MHC uses, um, because we're being asked to inform them about public support. Um, which I think should match, uh, we should be thinking, keeping in mind their criteria when we offer our support. Um, but first I wanted to invite Holly to make any comments. Yes, thank you. Uh, so uh, I of course took a, um, a staff level look at this because um, knowing that it, none of the proposal has, is coming before has come before the um, HDC, I, I took a, a level of it that. But I think um, that the, his, the, the state historic tax credits they're asking for, obviously, um, we, we do know that this is a contributing property, both the structures, both the uh, 1755 lead to the main house and the 1955 single story cottage, which once was a garage. That's no question that both these structures were built during the period of significance of the Nantucket Historic District. Um, and of course, in addition, both of these structures retain the integrity, which obviously everyone knows is, in, is important criteria for the district. Design materials, workmanship, feeling and the association that contribute to the significance of our National Historic Landmark District. Um, I did provide, as both uh, Aaron and Polly mentioned, I did take the initiative to send some comments on the proposal um, in, 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 in preparation for our meeting today, um, knowing that they have not been reviewed by myself, the Historic Structures Advisory Board, as well as the HDC. Um, and I think that was important. Um, the, um, there are, and I think that we do have some commis uh, commissioners on today who are also members of that advisory board will probably notate um, some of those concerns that I did bring up um, for the benefit of Polly and Erin, mostly Polly, because I know she's the one that's doing the design work. Um, but, and they're not inclusive. I wanted to also mention that. Um, Sorry, the, Holly, did you circulate those to us or are those- I really... did not, I was, oh. wasn't was able to do so um, before today. Oh, okay. So I can, um, share my screen and show you the comments that I provided for your benefit. Yeah, I mean, if you feel that they're relevant to our consideration of a letter of support for the project, if they're and, just uh, right, and and for the benefit, I think of both Polly and 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 Aaron and the commission itself. You know, I think we need to a acknowledge that um, historic tax credits. We encourage a B Nantucket is this is we're still learning. We're in the learning curve. Um, of understanding what the um, in, most important is. And I, I don't want to have this commission hang up on the specifics. Cause again, at the end of the day, 
the support letter that comes from this commission is specifically on the support of the project in general. We want to encourage this. And I think it's important to note that the applicant um, who Polly represents, this is his third historic tax credit within our um, historic district. And that's, that's great. I think um, he's going to want to continue doing this, let's hope, um, and, and be a, a voice for historic tax credits. Um, so there's a lot of benefits. Um, uh, but let me, I will share my screen, bear with me for a second, my apologies. Do, do, do. Sorry, I didn't have it available. I got way too many screens open. Sorry, y'all. Wait too many. I didn't do that right. Okay. You think I get this down pat? So first of all, this is my email that I sent to them yesterday afternoon. Again, I apologize. Um, this was literally right before um, HDC was starting at one o'clock. So, as you know, multitasking. Um, I wanted to thank them, first of all, for their um, application, um, but also uh, explaining that I appreciated seeing the reference to our recently resilient Nantucket, um, the, the flooding and adaptation building elevation design guidelines, which um, was that addendum that the HDC adopted in June. That's great. Um, so in a way, the um, HDC's historic determination, which is on their agenda for um, approval after my review, um, will also be a what I consider a two for one for this historic tax credit um, aspect, as well as for the resilient Nantucket um, requirements. Um, obviously, the historical significance of these structures are not in question. It's great to see this property received the love it deserves. Um, on a personal note, the Beamish family is a close family friend of mine, so um, I know that they're really happy to see this being um, get the love that it deserves. Um, in addition to the historic termination, the HTC. That Linda had provided for review, the proposed structure changes will require HDC review for approval. Um, there are items that you probably saw on the proposed site plan, which include a spa, patio, outdoor kitchen, shower, fencing. Those obviously will require its applicable COA applications. As Polly had mentioned, I pointed out that um, in the uh, proposal, the Pella Windows was a, a manufacturer. Um, we, Nantucket doesn't utilize them because they don't do TDLs to true divided lights. Um, so they are obviously, I brought out the Green Mountain and Boston Sash, which uh, obviously we're, we're typical of seeing with that Nantucket profile. And then of course, I think um, first and foremost, the, the replacement or uh, bringing back the 1755 lean to um, facade is very important. So of course those um, fenestration changes will need to be uh, appropriate. And then my additional comments were about the proposed stoop due to the change in elevation, which is great. Um, obviously from a um, programmatic um, um, initiative on behalf of the client, but also to um, be in line with our um, Secretary of Interior's uh, standards for flooding and adaptation, our resilient Nantucket design guidelines. Um, the the stoop that's being proposed really need to be needs to be in line with um, like the one that's closer down the road to at Seven Beaver Street where it's front on, and not have it that additional stoop. And then I mentioned about that rear dormer that's being proposed on that back lean to. Um, it's very close to the ridge, something that the um, commission doesn't like um, based on our obviously building with Nantucket in mind. Bring it down, and I I know that will be a comment from HSAP as well. And then the proposed French doors on the rear um, with the side lights are definitely not appropriate. So again, these are just some basic comments that I wanted to provide to them now. Um, I think time, obviously, yes, uh, Aaron will be submitting the applications to MHC um, for the uh, January um, MHC's got, uh, deadline. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to, to just be clear that a, the HDC has not reviewed these, not given a certificate of appropriateness, and B, um, that, you know, to obviously in that planning aspect. It is good to know, and again, um, I have not been privy to that, but it's good to know that um, 
they, they could always do an amendment onto um, their application to MHC. So, and, uh, you know, again, I know we're not the only um, historic district in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that has two commissions, historical commission and HDC. So this is not obviously the first rodeo for something like this. I think um, Epsilon and Aaron can um, definitely, you know, talk to that, that. This is definitely something that they've run into. Again, that's why I brought up the learning curve. I think this is something that we're all trying to work on and make sure that we're in line with. Um, I also wanted to mention for the benefit of um, Aaron and Polly that, um, again, we encourage these historic tax credit applications and we hope to see more and more of these for Nantucket. Um, and with that, um, with the creation of our CLG, um, I, I've been uh, working with a town admin to make sure that this, the information that a, the historical commission needs for these historic tax credit is going to be up on the on the town's web page. So that is a work in progress. We acknowledge that we want to be more transparent in what we want to see, understanding that when you're submitting for the state historic tax credits, um, that is a one and two part application process. And what does that mean? Part one, the significance. Part two is your proposed um, rehabilitation work. Um, and essentially you're looking for the um, overall letter of support for the project. So I think if we can lay out what, what we want to see in, as a quote unquote application, all the, the pertinent information like you've seen since, um, as well as when we meet, I think that would be very beneficial. So that way they can make sure um, they're meeting their timelines that the state is looking for. So that is my information in a nutshell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Holly. Um, so I'm going to move on to just um, share um, share the standards that I had mentioned before. So this is um, the rehabilitation tax credit um, code that the um, historical commission, Massachusetts historical commission executes against. And by the way, um, these tax credits were set to expire um, in this coming fiscal year, but they've been extended to 2027. So um, that's really, really good news because uh, they're a great tool for preservation. Um, so what I wanted to show you, obviously they need to be a qualified rehabilitation according to the Secretary of the Interior Standards. So um, we're gonna look at that next, but um, it is a competitive process, as a couple people have mentioned. Um, and the MHC, they give away $55 million of tax credits every year. Um, they have more demand than they have supply. So they have criteria. Um, and these are the criteria. I just wanted to list them for everybody. So the first is affordable housing. At least 25% of the tax credits should be allowed for projects that contain affordable housing. So any projects with affordable housing are preferred. Um, preservation. The extent to which historic architectural or cultural preservation is achieved for the features. Um, in considering the extent of preservation, the commission will review the utilization of traditional materials and technology and the retention of historic fabric. The project when necessary will be consistent with local and state planning priorities for de development or protection. So for instance, if we had um, you know, a state or a local objective of finding and rehabilitating these early homes on Nantucket of which these is, are, are one, that would be considered because we could then say this is consistent with our, um, you know, our stated objective in our preservation plan. Um, the commission will consider the extent to which the project complements other state revitalization efforts. Um, potential for loss or destruction. So like you'll remember, we did recently look at another project that was really in advanced demolition by neglect. Um, and I think there's also some neglect here. So um, if some, the situation being, if something isn't done, this is going to uh, be destroyed. Um, the statement of need, which is something we probably won't know too much about because that has to do with the applicant. Um, geographic diversity is also something we don't have any say in. It either is or it isn't. Um, feasibility, that's also, it's so public support, the extent to which the taxpayer has sought public comments or received public support for the project from public organizations, including the SHPO, the National Trust, local store. So that might include NPT. Um, our letter is required, um, but other letters are invited. 
Um, so for instance, if it was an affordable housing um, project, it could have a letter from the Affordable Housing Trust um, or Housing Nantucket. Um, economic in impact, the project's economic impact on the surrounding community. So for instance, if it was, you know, um, a big project involving the um, deteriorated brick electric company that would really have a large impact, I think we'd want to point that out. This is a smaller house, but um, that's another thing they look at. Um, are there any questions about the state's priorities in evaluating these projects or any other comments? Okay, um, now I just want to show. Um, oh wait, stop, stop that. I'm going to show the um, standards for rehabilitation, which is set by the Park Service. And I'm going to share this. Okay, so this is the Park Service's Technical Preservation Services Department. Um, Web page and it talks about the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation, which has everything to do. Clement, did you have a question? Oh no, okay. It has everything to do with um, taking a building that might have had one use and that use isn't needed anymore, so rehabilitating it for another use. Um, a classic example of this are all the industrial mill buildings that were being demolished or at risk of demolition and finding some new adapted use. Um, and a lot of tax credits are used for mill buildings. But it can also be, um, you know, bringing a building um, that is being used in the same way, but we have different needs today for that use. Um, so it needs to be rehabilitated to be even to be used in the same way. Um, so as you can see, the intent of the standards is to assist the long-term preservation of a property's significance through the preservation of historic materials and features. Um, and they pertain to building historic buildings of all type, including very simple wood frame um, structures. Uh, as stated in the definition, the treatment rehabilitation assumes that at least some repair or alteration of the historic building will be needed. So um, for instance, if you have really unusable or dangerous steps, you might wanna keep the steps, but put in some additional steps, that would be acceptable rehabilitation. Um, however, these repairs and alterations must not damage or destroy materials, features, or finishes that are important defining, in defining the building's historic character. So as you can see, all of this starts with defining what are the important historic features and you know, I think we should have some discussion about that given that this is a very simple building. So, and then there are these um, 10 standards, which I kind of preservation 101, I'm sure we're all familiar, but that it's going to be used for its historic purpose or placed into a new use that requires minimal change to the defining characteristics. The character of the property is retained and preserved the removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize the property is avoided. Um, we respect that it's a physical record of its time, so we're not gonna create a false sense of history and we're not gonna add conjectural features um, or architectural elements from other buildings. Um, the changes that have historic significance in their own right shall be retained. So for instance, the cottage that was built later is historically significant in its own right. Um, distinctive features finishes construction techniques such as the wood framing, um, examples of craftsmanship that characterize it are preserved. Um, deteriorated historic features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature, the new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and visual qualities and where possible materials. Um, replacement of missing features shall be substantiated by documentary, physical, or pictorial evidence. So this might come into place, for instance, with reinst restoring, reinstating the door. Um, chemical or physical treatment, such as sandblasting, that damage the material shall not be used. Surface cleaning is um, undertaken in a gentle way. Um, archaeological resources are taken into account, so that might be a feature with lifting and excavating. Um, <clears throat> new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction does not destroy 
what's there that is significant. Um, and uh, new additions or and adjacent related new construction should be um, reversible. So that uh, if it's removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the property and its environment would be unimpaired. So um, that's really the standard that is being expected to meet by tax credits by the rehabilitation. Does anybody have any questions or comments about those standards? And it, it, after that, we can get into sort of general talk about the project. No. Okay, so we have some members of the public. Um, would, does anybody want to advise us about the project from the public? And then we can talk as the commissioners. Brian? I think I'm the only member of the public, aren't I? Well, Mary is here as well. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I do. Um, I think the project is not one that I'd recommend supporting. And there are a lot of problems with it from the point of view of the standards in the building. And I just to run through them, the application shows what the application doesn't show raises questions. One is it refers to a partial cellar with brick paving, and then it shows the crawl space doesn't show that. There's a base of a chimney clearly visible, and then there's a missing mass in the core of the building, which is labeled as the cavity for the, the, the utility and the chimney. Now, I gather the chimney stack may still survive there, having been capped off the attic floor. That needs to be addressed because if that feature survives, that's a major contributing feature to the 18th century structure. Secondly, the lifting of the building, one could understand that this may be a precaution against rising central flood water and so forth, but it conveniently simply allows the building to become a real estate development for summer rentals. It rises three feet above its original setting, which is really uncharacteristic in that street, in that, that building, um, and creates a very different position on the street. The dormer on the, the shed roof, if the interior of the building has suffered a good deal of loss of original fabric, the, the exterior massing will now suffer that by the addition of a, of a shed addition a roof to make full use of the attic, which means that then the attic will also be modified. And then finally, the concerns about the timber frame, these are all normal repairs that an 18th century building requires. There's nothing surprising about it. The building does not exhibit major sagging or major evidence in the exterior of failure. Um, it does exhibit some problems inside, I think, where the chimney has been taken out, the timber frame there maybe weakened. But these are all in the realm of, you know, the ordinary things that one does. I think if, to give support to this project, I think if it were my decision, I'd, I'd say, go back and sharpen your pencils, because this isn't really preservation. Too much is being lost. The new things that are being introduced are too ordinary. And for instance, the front door is gone. That's an accomplished fact. It's no longer there. There's a window to remove the window and put into a plan a new doorway to restore the doorway opening um, into a location where it's not gonna be useful, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And as best I can tell, there's no evidence on which to base the doorway. So it's either conjectural or it's copying from the building, but as shown, it's made up of stock parts and quarter round moldings and none of it is particular to this building. So I'm sorry to be, be so negative, but I think the project is more real estate development and creating summer rental space and enlarging the density of use and space in the building. And if the tax credit is to be given, it seems to me that the part of that, what it does, it should allow for more careful work on the surviving original features to make sure they survive and they're incorporated as the building is modernized. And so again, I, if, if it were mine to review, I would push the proponents to say, if you need more space, propose a wing, a small rear L or something that's reversible but all the ways in which the space is being augmented inside are irreversible. They take out historic fabric, damage historic fabric, and if the chimney mass is there and that gets taken out, then that is a serious loss that really compromises the building. So I, I don't think this meets the secretary's standards. I think it's a far way off. I would push very hard on it to the proponents to rethink it. Okay, thank you, Brian. Um, any other commissioners want to make comments about the project? Angus. I uh, agree 100% with Brian. Um, he articulated it um, uh, probably much better than I would have, but um, my concerns are very much the same um, about the, the core character defining elements, uh, the, the central chimney mass. 
Um, uh, unfortunately, the upper part is lost. Uh, you can see it from the photographs that, that it's gone from the, the attic up, but the first and second floor, presumably it's um, you know still existing. And um, I, I think a responsible way to, to deal with it is to restore it and, and, um, and build it back like kind and restore what's there. Um, another concern is uh, the, the rising uh, for uh, the concern with flooding, but then uh, as Brian points out, the whole development of the basement and um, the window wells on the front of the house are um, uncharacteristic of, of the, the period. Uh, and are generally discouraged uh, uh, in almost all circumstances. Um, the size and scale of the, the dormer um, likewise is, is, um, is large and there would be a significant amount of material um, lost there. And I don't know whether that was actually planned to go in between existing rafters. Um, there's mention of replacing the ridge beam rather than um, restoring it. Uh, and um, my concern would be to, to either restore or, um, or support um, in, a, in a way that doesn't compromise the existing fabric. You can see the, the beautiful joints of the rafters meeting and being pinned together. And, um, and that certainly gets lost if all of, all of that jointry is cut out for a new ridge. Um, and so anyway, um, basically top to bottom back front to back I, i'm concerned about a, a lot of the proposed elements that's all hillary uh yes go ahead um i'm i am the not a non-architect but my uh, my uh, on listening to brian i was completely in agreement and my one the one thing that struck me is that the rehabilitation standards require that things be reversible. I don't know how you can reverse a three foot height and a brick and a new brick foundation. That's my comment. Okay, thank you, Georgia. Tom? Yes, without belaboring what else has been said, I, I agree with what uh, Brian and Angus said completely. Uh, I know this house quite well, and I knew the people that lived in it. Uh, and. I'm sorry, it, it's, uh, to me, it's no more than a real estate rehabilitation. Okay, thank you, Tom. Mickey? Um, yeah, just to add to um, Brian and Agnes's comments about um, the interior, you know, one of the, one of the um, character defining elements in this house is the wider stairway. And the, um, the addition of the powder room right at the, within that small entryway, I think really changes the character of the interior um, of that entryway and, and interferes with the, the appearance and function of that winder stairway. So that, to me, that's a concern also. Thank you for pointing that out, Mickey. Um, Barbara, Clement or David, did you wanna make any comments? Uh, Clement? Um, I just, in looking through this, it looks like a, you know, a successful way to um, not, I mean, restore the, you know, make this house livable. On the other hand, I think the character, as we've all said, the interior is destroyed. Um, the exterior is certainly transformed by um, the, the, access ramps up to the, the extra three feet for sure. And the changes in the streetscape. Also the, um, the French doors. Um, and I mean, I guess there, there's technically in the back of the house, but the house is on the corner. So all of that can be seen all around. And that um, changes the exterior so dramatically that it is no longer a historic house in my opinion. But so I think it's, you know, I'm, I know the HDC will have a lot of comments and I'm sure those will be very well taken, but it, um, it, doesn't, it does not retain its historical characteristics and I would be against the tax credits for that reason. But I'm sure as a real estate venture, it will be successful. So thank you. 
Thanks, Clement. Um, David, did you yeah. want to say anything? Yeah, I'll chime in. Um, I, I think I share everyone's concerns um, as far as the, the work happening in the exterior and on the interior. One thing I do want to point out, um, you know, I think everybody knows here that in order to qualify for the tax credits, the property needs to generate income. So I guess what, what I want to say is that while I, I certainly, with this particular application, feel, feel one, one, one type of way, I, I imagine that we're going to continue to get applications like this, where these plans, you know, are to, to really do, you know, a real estate development. And, um, you know, I think it's important to point out, but I also, it's, you know, want to point out it's part of the, part of the application. Um, so, you know, the, these properties do need to be income producing and, um, you know, it's so just something to consider. Thank you, David. Uh, Brian, did you want to say something else? Yes, I could just in part um, in answer to David's comment, <clears throat> there are two tax credit programs and they do invest, um, income producing properties. The slight difference is the federal tax credit program is a buy right. If you, if you use a building for whatever purpose that generates income and you can rehabilitate it and protect the building, you, you simply qualify for the, for the tax credit you know, once you've had an application that's been approved and you've carried out the work that's said. The state one was established with some other social goals too. And things such as, you know, to preserve buildings that might otherwise disappear, to help create affordable housing, to do some things over and above that. In that sense, I think to that one, I think a higher standard needs to be brought. Say it's not by right, and it's, it's perfectly fair for a community to weigh multiple things. And the maximization of profit, the maximization of usable space in the building is not one of the criteria. And that's, that's been a, a conflict in a lot of preservation projects in the past, but it's been established pretty definitively by court cases that that is never an, an absolute right. So I think here you, you have a different standard you can bring to bear because of the, the nature of a particular program. And um, in this case, Nantucket isn't threatened with abandoned buildings that are gonna be disappearing. It's threatened buildings that with the value of which is so high that every piece of them is being ripped open, torn, lifted and so forth to try to maximize every square inch of it. So I think I would tear those apart. And it's not to say that it shouldn't be an income producing property. I'm against income producing property or property or profit, but that, that should be tamed partly by some of the social and preservation goals. That, that'd be my only point on that. Thanks for that clarification. Thank you, Brian. That's really helpful. Um, I, I too have some comments. I mean, we uh, I agree with everything that has been said and I think everybody uh, that people brought different perspectives and I certainly learned something from these the different things I hadn't noticed. Um, when I looked at the project, my main concern is, you know, what what is what are the defining characteristics of these 18th century homes that we really want to keep? Um, because we don't have we have less we we don't have that many 18th century homes surviving, and we have even fewer 18th century homes that actually have 18th century character and have have the um, construction inside. So when the, the home is very simple, it's a simple timber frame structure. So, um, you know, Aaron, for your benefit, I, I felt that um, your survey should have called out the timber framing as a contributing feature and focused on some of the attributes of that, um, that would have been educational for people. But certainly the central chimney mass, that was the, um, the, the, uh, the HVAC system of the house back then, right? So that was structural uh, and continues to be structural, but it was also how the house worked. So it has, I haven't seen it and it wasn't documented in the photos, but it most likely has a bake oven. It might have a kettle oven. Um, and it, you know, we really need to see pictures of those um, things in documentation because the, this old masonry, that is the spine of these 18th century homes is so important to what they are and why they're important culturally and historically. Um, and then the other thing that is significant um, is the massing, um, which is more or less uh, retained, except that the whole house is elevated and the relationship of the house to the terrain and to the other homes on the street, none of which are elevated and all of which sit directly on the ground, is obliterated. Um, and one of the ways that you can identify these really old homes on Nantucket is the way that they've settled. Um, so I do think that the standards call for repairing the foundation 
Um, I, I know that we have guidelines for flood mitigation, but that's not to um, you know put more people living in the basement. We wanna move people up out of the basements. Um, and there are other ways to mitigate flooding, for instance, elevating utilities um, and dry proofing. Um, whereas we are introducing by raising a requirement for windows because it's going to be used for ha habitation. Um, so what I'm hearing um, is that this is a problematic application that does not meet the standards for historic rehabilitation and is not one that we can support with a letter. Um, but I really do want to, to echo and support what Holly said, which is we want to see these tax credits used um, because uh, the whole purpose is to have re uh, historic preservation rehabilitations. Um, I have one question, is, is there any chance that this is being used for affordable housing? Is it gonna be used for year round rental or affordable rental? Cause that I think would be something no. we'd wanna know. No way. No. no, no it's gonna be can I respond to any of the? Yes, and please go ahead and respond. Okay, okay. Um, and basically, um, the fireplace, the chimney, um, we have done a little bit of exploratory demolition to kind of see what's going on in there. There's not much that we can do without, you know, really ripping out some wood walls at this point. So we didn't want to um, totally, to, totally um, go into it, but we did find that uh, of the three chimneys on the first, uh, sorry, it's three fire boxes on the first floor, um, one was totally collapsed and demolished. It was in bad shape. And the other one at some point had been bricked and mortared up with a, um, um, uh, to, you know, to put in a wood burning stove. So there was obviously definitely issues um, um, with that one that it had obviously collapsed at some point too. Um, so, and that's, that's what we saw there. So there is uh, quite a bit of damage with those. Uh, we are keeping the original staircase and you know, the, I think somebody did mention the, the half bath under there. We will kind of see how that kind of works in there. Um, as far as the ridge beam that, that is staying, we're just gonna try to support it. If we need to, we might need to assist or some things to it. It is in, you know, again, that one is also, as you can see from the pictures of the roof, the roof is really sagging. It's in terrible shape and there's some two by fours up there holding it up. So we are gonna have to um, add some support to those, maybe sister some LVLs to them, which, you know, unfortunately cannot, you know, we, we, we would love to be able to leave those exposed, but unfortunately with having to sister some LVLs to get the support on there, we might not be able to. Uh, yes, thank you, Holly. Um, and like I said, we are keeping all the windows. We will minimize right between, as you can see there on that picture, number 75, that is where we wanted to have the, um, the dormer between those two. Um, yes, right in there. Thank you, Holly. And yes, we can minimize the height of it and are, you know, talking to Holly about doing that as well. And the thing is we would then need to, the northwest window there would probably need to be expanded a little bit, replaced to make it an egress window there. Um, as far as lifting it up, we really just, I mean, the, the beam is right there on the ground um, and it is severely rotted so much so that we have to, you know, the, I think there's a dresser on the second floor that had three inches of shims under the front front feet just so the drawers wouldn't be flying out. So there is a lot of structural issues on this house that we are really trying to address um, to keep it up. We're gonna keep all the walls that you see here, the flooring restore. Um, so, and we have to, yeah, I, the front stoop, we will modify that to, to meet the rest in the neighborhood. Although the design that I had on there was for right around the corner on Orange Street. And you see a lot of houses on Orange Street that do have this raised, um, you know, like three feet with the brick um, underneath for the- um, And they're all much later houses. So, um, okay. so 
And Polly, thanks for pointing that out. I um, just, in the interest of time, I mean, I think you've heard from the commissioner's appreciation for keeping the floors and approaching what you are saving with the right um, kind of approaches, but that the, the, the um, survey really should have included photographs of the masonry and recognize the central chimney stack as a key historic a feature of the house. And the aspect of the house being such an old house, being um, with the relation that it has to the ground, its original foundation. I mean, this house from what I understand has its original foundation, which is the granite and stone foundation, which on Nantucket can be prepared or repaired. Um, that um, the project, you know, the purpose of the tax credits is for historic rehabilitation. Um, and, uh, you know, I think you've heard our concerns. Brian, I see you have your hand up. Is there something else you wanted to say? Because I'm going to actually ask for a motion. Yes, I would just very briefly say that, that the, the, the conditions described, first of all, it really should have been in a conditions assessment because it they need to be looked at more carefully, but Nantucket has an unusual situation in which there are timber framers and masons on Nantucket who can do a lot of this work. I have yet to run a project where it costs more to repair a timber frame with timber frame elements and often sticking LDL and other things in and nailing them together doesn't provide as durable a repair, it causes more damage and is more expensive. So I think I would strongly recommend rethinking some of the traditional material repairs and looking for people to understand the traditional materials. It may, the perception that it's expensive may not be accurate. So stop there. That's like a really- that's, Our issue with that though, was that it really then, I mean, the ceiling height is low enough as it is. Once you um, have to go with timber, you, you do have to have larger beams um, that will kind of even make the ceiling lower. So I think- If that I could know, it, it, this, when you repair with timber, you are repairing in the, in the line of the timber. You're not adding a layer, you're going in and, and doing a splice and the splice can repair, straighten. The removal of a front sill and corner posts can be done very easily from outside. Um, I've, most projects I've gone to when, when I've taken the architect's estimate and then bid it out with a timber framer, it's come back cheaper every time. It's more on labor, less on materials and it keeps the physical functioning of the frame. It continues to behave as a unit not as a discontinuous piece of nails and different joinery. So I, I, I really would urge you to rethink that. It, okay, I'll look into that definitely. Thank with you. Modern materials. So I, can I just what add I, to can I just briefly add to some of Polly's comments? Um, briefly, yes. Um, just to add, um, in terms of some of the existing conditions, as Polly mentioned, some exploratory demolition has begun on the chimney stack. The current condition is that it is in, entirely enclosed with, um, with partition walls, so not readily accessible, but it's certainly the intent to continue that exploratory demolition and documentation. Um, we expect there may be a request for that from um, MHC and the National Park Service as well, which is why that work has begun. In terms of the elevation of the building, we did look very closely at the guidelines that have been published both um, on Nantucket and by the National Park Service um, in terms of gui guidance and best practices for raising buildings. And um, the design was really derived from the guidance in those publications. Uh, we certainly hear your concerns on other aspects of the project. And I think we can bring those back to the larger project team and, and take a look at how the project might be, aspects of the project might be revised. Um, so I guess I would just ask that at this point, if perhaps the conversation could be continued to afford us an opportunity to take a closer look at all of the feedback we've received today um, and perhaps come back to a, a future meeting um, to continue the conversation. Yeah, the, yeah. As I mentioned, state tax credits are obviously a vital source of funding for the project. Um, and um, to have the local support is um, is essential for that process, and we would we would hope to get get to a place where um, you would all feel uh, very comfortable supporting the project. Okay, so yeah, is there a I motion? A comment before we before we move. I, I don't want to seem obstreperous, but it seems to me the three foot jump in height 
uh, that they, that you do not seem to be backing off of, Aaron, is a uh, is a insurmountable uh, barrier, from my mind. To well, to Georgia, people. sorry, I'm seeing that Holly wants to say something, and um, you know we're not the HDC, so oh. Holly, did you? Sorry, I'd like to. Um, we've had been requested to continue. So I'd like to have a motion and then we can offer some final advice. But Holly, did you want to say something? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to mention for the benefit of everybody that, you know, again, our guidance that was adopted by the HDC follows the recently um, enacted uh, National Park Service standards specifically for the these concerns because yes it does it, it there is a concern of of taking a streets um, your your streetscape um, taking away but um, this falls in line with the recommendations of having a um, an increase in height of four feet or less uh, for contributing structures. Um, and obviously evaluating that streetscape for each of these elevation projects is part of the HDC review process, but understanding that as the need for um, mitigating uh, for flooding hazards within our low lying core historic district, there are going to be some fluctuations within our elevations of our historic resources. But, you know, again, this was to a, we, we, we created the Resilient Nantucket. You know how, how passionate I have been about that whole initiative. Um, and it happened at the right time with the, the National Park Service's um, um, recommendation. It, there, that was not there before. So, you know, I, I think this will go through that process um, and kindly. And um, again, they, they're, they're in line based on what I see so far. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Holly. Um, so there's been a, a request to continue. Um, can I have a motion? Uh, Tom, was that a motion? <laughs> I can't hear you. I was muted. I, I'll make a motion to continue. Okay. I'll second. I'll, I'll second. second. Yeah. Okay. So um, Clement? Well, let's and make the motion to continue and include HTC comments. Okay, so the motion is to continue, continue our, the conversation, our, our conversation about the um, application of tax credits to 3 Beaver Street with the addition of the HDC uh, comments. Yeah, and could I also add to that that we'd like to see the documentation of the cellar floor, the um, foundation um, conditions assessment, and the central chimney? stack that's remaining. Was there anything else we were curious about? Okay. I'd like to see what the um, L flood elevation um, criteria is here. Or, you know, is, is this a minimum raise or is it a little beyond that? Great. Oh, okay. So with that added to the motion, um, Clement? Aye. Uh, Mickey? Aye. Uh, Georgia? Aye. David? Aye. Angus? Aye. Tom? Aye. Okay, um, and I'm also an aye. And I just wanna thank you for your interest really in making this a historic rehabilitation. Um, I, our feedback is offered really in the spirit of um, pointing out some of the historic properties that we feel as the Historical Commission are contributing that we'd like to see preserved so that we can support this. And we very much hope that we get to a point where we, we can support this. Yep. Thank you. And can yeah. I just ask a point of clarification on the motion um, yeah. with regard to HDC comments? Um, so are you requesting that we go through an HDC review before coming back to you or is consultation on the staff level acceptable? I think it needs to be from the commission, the okay. HDC, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can come back to us whenever you feel like you're ready to come back to us, just give us a week's notice. Um, but I think it would be helpful to the application to be able to see what the HDC had to say about it. Understood, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you very much.
Um, okay, so moving along on our, um, oh, and I also wanna thank um, Brian for your comments and for joining and looking at the application. Um, and I, I really hope, um, Polly, sorry, just one other comment. Um, if you, uh, have, do you know the Nantucket Preservation Trust? Have you worked with them or know about them? Um, no, I haven't worked with them. Okay, I, so uh, Linda Williams, I've worked with a lot, so she can help guide me with this. Yeah, and I actually would highly recommend, um, especially if you're, um, you know, with the group that you've got, that you reach out to the Nantucket Preservation Trust, and um, Holly can put you in touch with them. Mary Bergman is here, but I'm Think maybe okay. she's in another meeting also, but Mary, oh, oh, Mary, Mary's, <laughs> Mary's giving a thumbs up. Saying, no, yes, I'm here. I'm talk. here. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Because um, Mary has a lot of knowledge um, and resources specific to Nantucket okay. that can help you with the tax credit process, and that's really what they do. And she'd be a great addition to the team. Oh, sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mary, did you want, sorry, I didn't mean to speak for you. Did you want to say anything else about that? No, that's all. Yeah, I think that Linda did do some of our research and, and some of the preparation, um, but we're, we're always happy to talk further. Okay. My, rec my recollection, Hillary, is that the NPT also has a lot of sources among um, uh, historic builders and people who've taken the North Bennett Street courses and know know what they're doing around reconstruction of historic houses. That is very true, Georgia. Yes, I'd definitely be happy to put you in touch with um, folks here who were working in the field. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I had in mind too. All right, great. Thank okay, you. thank you. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is the workflow for this tax credit review. I think it would really help the community if we had this. Does anybody have any comments about that? Or questions? Holly. Um, if the commissioners don't have any um, specifics at the moment, I, I, I did mention it. This, is, this has been on my brain to, to work on for quite a while now. Um, but I've had obviously preliminary talks months ago with Florencia, our public outreach coordinator, who, as you probably have noticed, now we have a CLG page. Um, but my thought process was to have a preservation planning page um, with all this information specifically about historic tax credits as well. Um, and really coming, when it comes to the historical commission coming out with what exactly are you all wanting to see? Um, making sure that, you know, of course, you know, you've got consultants like Aaron that from Epsilon that knows what the state is looking for and what their um, applicable uh, application deadline process is. So Hillary, you mentioned, you know, we would wanna see it at least a week in advance. Um, what I was also envisioning was, um, and I've been looking at other historical commissions within the Commonwealth to see what they're asking for. There really isn't any uh, application, if you will, unless there were, were local tax credits, um, but this being a state run, it's really, again, at the end of the day, historical commissions are to give um, a recommendation on the overall project. So I think what would be, be very beneficial would for, for people to know, A, we are ACLG, but essentially um, the, HDC would continue reviewing their historic determination, which they have been doing since 1955. And that would be one additional aspect that they would be submitting to. Uh, B, uh, they would be submitting to you all a week in advance with both form one, or excuse me, part one, part two, in, in its entirety, as you all saw um, for this particular ap application. Um, and I think, having that information ahead of time. And then of course, um, I will be um, making sure um, as much as possible, and I apologize, I didn't get to do it, but um, I did my own internal staff report. I would like to be able to provide you all with a staff report from what my perspective is. And again, I'm coming at this review um, with both my hats on as preservation planner from both the historical commissions aspect with historic tax credits and the HDC, because obviously I wanna be um, proactive 
um, with this particular with these type of applications if I know that they, they have not been vetted through the HDC. Um, so and that's what I took the opportunity to do this week for the benefit of the commission that um, you know um, we try to obviously establish a, the schedule earlier as much as possible with, with, with the chairs. Um, but I didn't receive the application for this until Tuesday. So again, there was a little bit of a time crunch. And as you all know, I'm extremely busy with the HDC. So I really didn't have the, the initiative to be able to provide my comments to you prior to. So I apologize. But um, I think establishing um, people's, uh, the application process with the state and um, obviously having our uh, schedule for when people know we meet would be beneficial as well. And on that note, I also wanted to ask if the commission could um, vote on their next six months, if that was okay. Um, so that way we can schedule that, um, obviously not knowing when we're gonna be going back in person, but I, you know, no idea how that's gonna work now that we have the mask mandate back again. Um, but yeah, that, those were my thoughts about having as much information on the town's website as possible for organizations like PAL and Epsilon um, and VHB, there's a whole bunch of other ones that do this kind of consulting work. So they can click and get, okay, we need to go to Nantucket's Historical Commission. What do we do when we want to sub submit his historic tax credit applications? But not just that too, I want to be able to get the information out there. So I will say other historical commissions do have um, links to the National Park Services, the technical review pages about historic tax credits, about the significance, what it means, what they're looking for at this at the federal level as well. Um, and I do have all those links that I would like to have that information available because as you all know, I'm all about education and the more information we can have available to the public, the better. Thanks. Thank you, Holly. So Holly's suggesting that we might develop um, and make available on the website a, a schedule, um, you know, that we do want to support these tax credits and here's what we're looking for. You know, on Nantucket, so many of these buildings are just, they're very simple buildings. And I, I wonder what folks think about maybe having a statement about, you know, for the different types of buildings, what are the contributing features that we want to see preserved, kind of like taking the rehabilitation standards of um, the Park Service, but really making it specific for Nantucket. Any Who would do that, Hillary? How, how, how could we get that written? Well, I'm wondering if it doesn't exist already. I mean, Mary, does NPT have this information? I don't believe so, because I think you're really looking at every neighborhood. Um, but I think that's something Holly and I have talked about in the past, the idea that each of these neighborhoods, whether it's, you know, there's a difference between Sconset and Quid Med and Pulpus. And I know that, um, I believe, Clement, you would know, is Clement on the call. Isn't uh, Sconset Trust hiring Madikin, or Michael, rather, to look at Michael May yeah. Sconset to do some character defining teachers work? Yes. Uh, the Wisconsin Trust has hired Michael May to do a um, historic by neighborhood in Wisconsin, of which he's identified five, I believe, um, different historical um, characteristics for each neighborhood. So we can have better guidelines for what fits, what rehabilitation fits into what neighborhood. And, and I think so, that's a good so. point that it's not even, you know, there's a Columbus and Quidnet and Sconset, and then within Sconset, there's five different distinct looks. Um, I know it's not easy, but I guess in some ways the answer really is it is, it is um, application by application. But so you're saying, Hillary, too, is that it has to be as minimally invasive as possible. Yeah, and you know, I think we obviously we're going to need the applicant to call. I mean, the disappointing thing about this was that the Epsilon did so much work, but they didn't point out the timber framing, you know, and the central chimney mask. And they, I just felt they didn't document, you know, they spent more time documenting 1940s windows than Angus. Did you have a hand up? I just wanted to say about the simplicity of structures like Three Beaver that, um, you know, the, the central chimney is really what, what sets up the program of 
of the use of the structure that everything is is around that. Um, I've lived in a mid 17th century Nantucket house before and and um, that that winding stair that goes beside the fireplace and the the entry space is um, is a, a, a core element, but the fireplaces um, that face the other three orientations off of that um, that central fireplace um, has set up the the dynamic in those spaces. So to set up a a, a modern clear open plan um, ignores and destroys um, that that whole dynamic. And so I think um, guidelines and um, and uh, and character defining elements. Um, really should be um, um, specified and, and uh, uh, acknowledged and restored if if you're looking for historic tax credits. Um, I see George's hand and then Tom. Does anyone remember the Starbuck Kilvert house? Yes. <laughs> I, remember this. I mean, the destruction of the central chimney by the new owners of the Starbuck Kilvert house after they, when they bought it. I mean, that was such a disaster. And there was temporarily, at least, a very big backlash in the community at that time. Um, and that was to be, create an open plan. You know, Susie Locke said to me a long time ago, Susie Locke of all people, people buy Nantucket houses and then try to create a Martha Stewart interior. And what they don't realize is that Martha Stewart is basing her interiors on what we already have in the original. So how can we get this message across? I mean, this is to destroy a central chimney element. And it, it, it upset me enormously that these people haven't even spoken to Mary Bergman. I mean, here we've got this resource on how to do it properly and, how to, and who can do it properly. There she's, she sounds like she's never even heard of these people, which tells me that the entire thing is motivated towards creating a profit incentive, creating a an income producing property with no no real eye towards how it's going to look architecturally. Yeah. Georgia. Sorry. Mary, go ahead. Yeah, I can just say that I, I you know, I did a, a lot of research for the seller before they sold the house. So and before I knew they were going to sell the house. So I think they knew, and people in this conversation should have known that MBT was here. Really? Well, but Mary, we called on you. I mean, I called on you at the beginning. I, I don't understand. Are you feeling like you couldn't participate because? No, 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 no. Um, I, I, I mean that. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, that's why I directed the conversation to you at the end. And I wasn't even sure if you wanted to speak that. I think she's saying she did research for the sellers before it was sold. Maybe this it was correct. This belonged to Michelle Kolb, right? And yeah, I mean, and we've all talked, like I talked to Penn and she told me what was in the house. So, well, either the buyers knew it going in and just disregarded it, which is my suspicion, or they didn't care. Mary, I'm sorry. What ex I want to make sure we capture your point and hear what you're trying to say. I, I, George, Georgia understood what, you know, what I was trying to say. Okay, well, I'm not sure I did. Tom? Uh, two or three points to George's comment. I was Kilbert's, which is the house we're talking about, the Christopher Starbuck house. Kilbert lived in that house for 40 or 50 years. Old man, Charles Kilbert. I was his caretaker. And I was going to bring up that this house at 3 uh, Beaver Street, the central chimney there is very much uh, similar to what Kilbert had there. There were, there were three chimneys, uh, three fireplaces in that house. And uh, they basically, you know, turn that house into something else other than what it was. It was a really magnificent uh, example of uh, a, an old Nantucket house. 
I was also party to a, another central chimney situation when I, uh, when I was uh, involved with the Congregational Church, the parsonage on Central on uh, Center Street had, has a, uh, a central chimney. And I don't know if anybody's aware of it, but architecturally, uh, a central chimney, in many cases, uh, the beams go from the outside walls into the central chimney and are hung there. That's why a lot of that is extremely important. And I'm not sure whether these people at 3 uh, uh, Beaver Street, I, I wish they would have shown more about the central chimney because they're liable to realize they have more trouble than they are even aware of if they open those walls up a little bit more and find out in the ceilings what is going on with that central chimney because uh, that is what holds a lot of the second floor up. And so I think that we need, they need to do a lot more research uh, before they come back to us. Well, thank you. I guess we'll see if they do. I hope, I hope um, you know, there's this tax credit program is there to be able to restore things like these features. So hopefully they'll decide that it's interesting and an asset to the house. We'll, we'll see. Um, okay. So Everybody seems to be in favor, including Holly, of having some kind of workflow. And the question is, who's going to do the work to create the workflow? Um, and I guess we'll sort of let that marinate for a little while and see if, if something becomes an obvious course of action. i am um, been working on something. So um, again, I'll, I'll, I'll lead that and then bring it to the commission so you all are, are, are aware of what we're working on. I think okay, the best oh, great. Case, of course. Okay. Um, Terrific. But I really do, I do agree that having um, an established uh, schedule for the commission, because um, I think we, we are all the way through December, if we want to figure out what we want to do for January, will not only be beneficial for the public in general, but I also do think that'll be helpful for PAL, because um, of course it would be nice to have PAL at one of your monthly meetings yeah. too. So yeah. our meetings are, are on the third Friday of every month at 10. And that's been the case all year. Um, does anybody want to change the time of our meeting? No. So Holly, we can just go forward with that. And if there are any conflicts, like it falls on a holiday or whatnot, then we'll need to resolve it. Um, okay, so moving on, I wanted to talk about what to do next about our joint meeting with the HTC. Um, I am seeing that Georgia needs to leave. Georgia, did you have any final comments that you wanted to make at all about our just, just that I wish I could be here for the for when when the uh, people are being involved with demolition and salvage unfortunately we're leaving the island on December 10th for the oh. winter but any zoom things that we can do I'd be happy to do because that's a very okay. that's an issue that's been close to my heart for 20 years well you can zoom oh, to be in you can zoom to be interviewed by the students so they'll take your feedback yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And Just I thought, right, right to Holly. It was an interesting comment that Diane Coombs made about Bruce Holgate talking to her about making space available. Now, I don't know Bruce Holgate or where his space is, but I liked the comment. And I would think that would be worth following up. Yeah. That's my comment. Thank you very much, all. I'm okay. sorry. Thanks, Georgia. Bye. 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 Um, so I included just some meeting, meeting notes that I took. They weren't I'm not assuming that they're comprehensive. I didn't watch the recording again and augment the meeting notes. I just wanted to put something down um, to jog everybody's memory. Um, we still need to schedule our next meeting. Um, Holly, did you have any comments or thoughts on minutes or our next meeting? I do have minutes that were created by Terry, our minutes taker for the HDC and other boards. Um, so she has done those for the benefit of the CLG. I will be actually um, sending them to both commissions for your review um, and subsequent um, approval at the next CLG meeting, obviously. Um, I have not, I think this is something that we need to circulate with the chairs um, moving forward on uh, a schedule um, because obviously with the holiday coming, two holidays coming up, um, I'm not, I'm not sure how, how that's gonna work. Um, 
But if this is something that I can reach out to town admin as well to make sure that we have a, a Zoom account instead of going through. See, as you, as you all are probably aware, our first CLG meeting um, was recorded live and on YouTube. There were quite a few people that were watching it live, but that was pretty cool for our first initial. And I, um, from a staff's perspective, I, I don't want to make, make that as a, um, an ongoing thing if we're going to be meeting, you know, more frequently than once a year, but, um, you know, I can definitely uh, reach out to town admin to see what's available and go from there. But I, I think also having a, a, a mutual agreement from both sets of chairs on when to have our next CLG meeting. Um, well, if we could, am I muted? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we are. Oh yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, if we can meet by Zoom, I think it's really easy to meet. And you know, you're the, you you got a bear of a schedule, Holly. So could I ask you to just suggest some times? And okay. Um, but we did agree that we would meet for three. We'd have three joint meetings to work out to give ourselves the time to work out the MOU, and um, which I think is really important to the town as from reading between the lines from Ken um, and uh, I think important to different people on the commissions as well. And then once we have the MOU, maybe we can decide on some joint initiatives. Um, I prepared these slides um, just as a jumping off point for the MOU because you have to understand what each other does and how it fits into the federal and state um, uh, resources or system of preservation in our country. Um, is there anything I missed on this, Holly? Primary duties? No, okay. Um, and I wanted everybody to know I participated in this training and I was able to ask some questions and I, I thought they were interesting, the answers. This James Gebert works for the Park Service. He prepares, um, so they refer to themselves as the keeper of the registry. So he, was, he works for the keeper and he prepares these nominations. Um, and one of the things that had come up in our meeting was about the list of contributing structures and what the process would be for updating that. And he's suggesting that, um, you know, we should probably talk to the SHPO if we want. So as part of our survey process, updating the contributing or non-contributing structures list would be something we would want to do. Um, and I asked about tax credits and CLGs. He said there's no process on the federal side. Um, and anyway, I just thought it was interesting to include those, so I put it in the packet. Then I took a stab at just putting something on paper about this draft MOU. Um, it was actually a little challenging. I thought, you know, it's easy for us to fill in. So what this says is, in order to assist one another in the community, the Nantucket Historic Commission and the Nantucket Historic District Commission desire to have a mutually agreed memorandum of understanding one other's specific responsibilities, shared interests and areas of collaboration. Therefore, it's observed and agreed that, and then I just put down what we do, and I thought they could put down what they do, and then jointly say that um, we both may at our discretion solicit the assistance of one another um, but then also we might want to agree on some areas that we specifically want, think we want to collaborate. Um, and that that's obviously something that we would have to draft together. Um, so that's what I did. And I wondered if the commissioners felt that there was anything more that we should do or would want to do or would want to talk, you know, any advice about this effort or should we just get our meeting scheduled and you know bring this to the meeting and draft it together commissioners any thoughts mary well, please any thoughts? i would think that um no this is clement i would just think that we would want them to do kind of a, a background a, a starting base like you've done and um bring it to the 
meeting. So we're not forcing them to out on the spot, come up with something. But if we send them what you've started and then say, please complete your side of it and then we can discuss it. Okay. So a suggestion to send that to them and ask them to- Ask them to fill it out, yeah. I think that the, um, the joint project that we'll be doing together are gonna to be the interesting ones. And those are the ones we probably need to come up with as a proposal, mm -hmm. you know, as a starting point. Okay. Other comments? Well, I think the tax credits we've, we've seen today that we need their input um, on these tax credit applications. If I may, on that point, and that's kind of another reason why I want to have this information available on the town's website for the benefit of the public, is because I want them to understand that they also submit their historic determination to the HDC. The HDC's you know, enabling legislation from 1955 doesn't preclude them to be included with that process. Um, so, you know, obviously that's something new um, for them to, to realize uh, applicants. Um, so of course I wanna be able to have that clear on there. Um, in regards to the, the draft MOU, I would like to, of course, Ken is gonna be working with myself um, on this draft MOU after both commissions input. And I would like to get his feedback on what you've drafted so far, Hillary, if that's okay. Um, he does have obviously the packet. Um, I don't know if he's taken a look at this in depth, but I would like to request his assistance on looking at this. Um, and of course there's some typical language in MOUs that we would wanna you know, add in there, but I think this is a good basis of, of starting that. And I do agree that both commissions would want to come up with that joint list. I think we have a little bit of understanding from the first CLG meeting. And again, you know, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll know that I'm very appreciative of, um, of Nantucket being a certified local government and you, everybody have seen the benefits of it so far. Um, don't want the negative history of the creation of the historical commission back in 2005 and it being defunct be a negative, um, obviously indication moving forward. I think the HDC does understand um, and appreciate what this commission does. And I think there's an understanding neutrally of the two commissions together. And again, that's why I'm all about education, 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 um, because that's how we, we learn and grow um, and, and understand how we all bring all these things, things together. So that's what I would like to do is reach out to Ken and, and see if he's taken a look at this and, and go from there. It would be great to have Ken's input. I, I, I hope I'm, you know, we're using this term memorandum of understanding, but um, this is not a legal document. So this is just a way for us to communicate, communicate with the community so that everybody understands. And I think it's a really great, um, uh, it, it will create opportunities for us to ask questions of one another and deepen our understandings of our shared interest, kind of to Mickey's point. Um, but I think sometimes there can be a tendency for, oh, it's an MOU, it needs to have like all this legal language, please, I, I really don't wanna go there. <laughs> Let's have this be a friendly document. That, that's my opinion. Um, okay, so, um, I think we want to uh, wait for Holly to suggest some dates for the month of December. So it's gonna be soon. It'll be a Zoom meeting. Um, we'll have um, the opportunity to draft this MOU. I suggest that we do it in real, it would be great if they could populate the kind of obvious stuff like what they do and their mission and all of that ahead of time. Um, so that the stuff that we, are, we filled in is there and then the counterpart of that from them is there. And then we can work on drafting it together. Um, Holly, you had a hand up? Yes. Uh, would you be able to send this to me in Word format? Oh, yeah, definitely. Awesome. I'll Thank get you, you the Word format, Holly. And I'll give you the um, those other colorful documents um, too, because they might like to see that. 
Um, okay, any final comments about anything, folks? Anyone want to share their favorite weird Thanksgiving food that they're going to be having next week? <laughs> I ask that every year. Nobody really has any weird foods they want to talk about. <laughs> Hillary, do you have a weird food thing that you're having? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a molded uh, Waldorf jello salad that is a specialty of my mother's that I always want to make and my family won't let me. <laughs> molded. So does You're this start at previous Thanksgiving? How does that work? It's a jello salad with like walnuts and cranberries and apples and it's a bright pink. And it just sits there on the buffet table and jiggles. It's the oh, best. <laughs> a mold, not mold. It's not moldy. <laughs> Molded. Molded, yeah. It's a 50s thing, I guess. Yeah. All right, make, well then. I'll make a movement to adjourn. <laughs> OK. I see Tom seconding it. Um, all right. Bye, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Great meeting. Same to you. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.